Everything has changed now about how African Americans think about their ancestors and identity. Until now, there has been a common belief that all African Americans are descendants of African slaves brought through the transatlantic slave trade. It was believed that they were outsiders who came from Africa and that their ancestors were slaves with no identity other than this. But now, the hidden and erased part of history tells that the ancestors of African Americans were native to America compared to the majority of the white population of America today, which are the actual outsiders coming from Europe. So, what evidence shows African Americans are descendants of the Aborigines of America? In this video, let's know about this. The Black History Archives Long before the European settlers arrived, the Americas were home to a wide variety of indigenous tribes with different physical characteristics, languages, and cultural practices. One of the often overlooked realities of these native populations is that several tribes had darker skin, features that resembled those of Africans. Until now, people have not seen them, but the hidden paintings in some history books show how they really were. These tribes, including the Yamasi, Choctaw, and some Caribbean and South American groups, were noted for their dark skin, tightly curled hair, and broad facial features. Though these characteristics led European colonizers to assume these people were of African descent, these dark-skinned tribes were indigenous to the Americas. However, the same assumption later led to them being added to the African racial group, which became the reason for their erasure of record altogether as the dark-skinned Aborigine tribes of America. Historical records and observations by European explorers offer glimpses into the existence of these tribes. For instance, explorer James Adair wrote extensively in his 1775 book, The History of the American Indians, about the physical diversity among the Native American populations. Adair noted that some tribes had darker skin tones, which he compared to the Moors of Africa. Other explorers and settlers recorded similar observations, but their accounts were often distorted by racial bias and obsession with classification. Over time, as the colonizers wanted to impose strict racial hierarchies, these dark-skinned Aborigine tribes were classified as black, a term that erased their unique heritage. But today, as we come to know about them, the presence of these dark-skinned tribes challenges the simplistic racial distinctions that European settlers imposed on the Americas. The colonizers' fixation on race and skin color made it difficult for them to categorize these tribes. If they acknowledged these dark-skinned individuals as Native Americans, it would disrupt the racial hierarchy that positioned Europeans as superior to all other groups. Instead, settlers often combined these tribes with African slaves, erasing their identities as indigenous peoples and contributing to the false assumption that all dark-skinned people in America were of African descent. This historical erasure served multiple purposes. By categorizing dark-skinned Native Americans as African slaves, European settlers reinforced the notion of racial inferiority that justified both slavery and the dispossession of indigenous lands. This categorization also facilitated the enslavement of these native populations, as it blurred the line between Native Americans and Africans, making it easier for settlers to treat both groups as property. They were enslaved, yet they lost their native identity. That's why it's being argued now that a significant percentage of the black population in today's America had Aborigine ancestors. That's because it's little known that between 1492 and 1880, 5.5 million Native Americans were enslaved in the Americas. This practice occurred alongside the transatlantic slave trade, which brought 12.5 million Africans to the Americas, and the two systems of enslavement were deeply interconnected. Dark-skinned Native Americans were particularly vulnerable to enslavement due to their physical resemblance to Africans. 
European settlers often failed to differentiate between these two groups, leading to the enslavement and sale of Native Americans alongside Africans in the same markets. This lack of differentiation had profound consequences. For dark-skinned Native Americans, enslavement was not just a loss of freedom, it was a loss of identity. Once enslaved, their cultural practices, languages, and histories were suppressed as they were forced to adopt the customs of their European captors. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. It helps with the algorithm so this information can reach more people. Let's continue now. Interestingly, the process of enslavement and erasure was not limited to the English colonies. Spanish colonizers, for example, enslaved large numbers of Native Americans, particularly in the Caribbean and South America, where dark-skinned indigenous populations were abundant. As historian Andres Resendez explains in his book, The Other Slavery, the uncovered story of Indian enslavement in America, the enslavement of Native Americans was a widespread practice that played a crucial role in the development of the colonial economy. Because black native tribes and African slaves worked as slaves, they had a shared experience and a common cause, to get freedom. This brought the two groups closer, encouraging intermarriage. However, here, it should not be confused that African Americans are today descendants of the black aborigines because black aborigines married Africans. Technically, marriages like these resulted in hybrid children that had both African and Native American roots. But when the black aborigines married among themselves, they still produced children who were dark-skinned and looked similar to Africans. Therefore, today, there are equal chances of African Americans having both Native American and African roots, or entirely Native American roots you should know that the reclassification of mixed-race individuals was not accidental. It was part of a broader strategy by the U.S. government to seize Native American lands and resources. One of the most significant policies in this regard was the Dawes Act of 1887. The Dawes Act, also known as the General Allotment Act, was aimed to assimilate Native Americans into European-American culture by breaking up communal tribal lands and dividing them into individual allotments. Native Americans who were registered on tribal rolls were eligible to receive land allotments, while those who were not were excluded from this process. However, for individuals of mixed African and Native American ancestry, claiming their Native American heritage was often made deliberately difficult. By classifying these individuals as African Americans rather than Native Americans, the government could deny them the land rights that came with tribal membership. This reclassification served a dual purpose. It reduced the number of people eligible for land allotments, increasing the amount of land available for European settlers, and erased the indigenous identity of people who had African ancestry. Native tribes were denied their land simply because they had dark skin and were slaves. This helped the American government to simply deem the black native tribes as Africans who were trying to get a share in the land. The Dawes Act also enabled the U.S. government to seize large amounts of Native American land. The policy allowed the government to take surplus land, land that was not allotted to individual Native Americans, and sell it to European settlers. By reclassifying individuals of mixed African and Native American descent as African Americans, the government was able to exclude them from land allotments, facilitating the seizure of Native lands. This process of land dispossession had devastating effects on Native American communities, many of which lost their ancestral lands and were forced to relocate. The reclassification of mixed-race individuals also had profound cultural consequences. By categorizing them as African Americans, the government contributed to the erasure of Native American heritage within the African American community. Over time, African Americans with Native ancestry were taught to identify solely with their African roots, and their indigenous heritage was forgotten. 
This erasure was so complete that many African Americans today are unaware of their Native American ancestry, even though it is likely that a significant percentage of the African American population descended from Native tribes. Today, black people's heritage is evident in their physical traits, cultural practices, and family history. Some have culture and appearance much like Africans have, but some look quite different despite being black. That's because they don't have only mixed heritage. They actually are direct descendants of the black Aborigines. For example, some African Americans have physical characteristics commonly associated with Native Americans, such as high cheekbones, straight hair, and certain skin tones. These traits are living reminders of the Native American ancestry that many African Americans carry, even if it has been erased from the historical record. For decades, African Americans were taught that their ancestors were solely African slaves brought to the Americas during the transatlantic slave trade. While this narrative is not entirely false, it omits the indigenous heritage that many African Americans share. By erasing this connection, the U.S. government and European settlers contributed to a distorted understanding of African American identity, leaving many disconnected from their full heritage. Today, there is a growing movement among African Americans to reclaim their Native American ancestry and rediscover the history that has been erased. What do you think? Are most African Americans today descendants of Native Americans or African slaves? What do you know about your ancestry from the real stories running in your family? In the comment section right below, Share your thoughts on the fact that African Americans are natives of America more than white Americans who came from Europe. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support our efforts by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. It encourages us to bring more valuable videos for you.